All right, so in this next one, we're not going to be looking at a specific situation. We're going to be a little more vague because we know that IB likes that, so we're just going to deal with a little bit of vagicity or something like that. Anyway, I'm not an English teacher. I'll make up whatever words I want to. Don't you dare mock, knock my English. Anyway, let's go. We got a sample size of 25, so n equals 25 taken from a normal population so x is a normal distribution with unknown mean and a variance of 36 all right now that is the variance of the population which means that we do have our standard deviation of six which will be nice and we're going to test the hypothesis that the mean is 42 with the alternate hypothesis, so null hypothesis of 42, and the alternate hypothesis is that the average is larger than 42, and we will accept for or reject for the given information right here. So let's just draw a picture real quick. What does this look like? Well, we're giving the null hypothesis that the mean is 42, and we're saying if x is greater than 43.5, so if I go 43.5 right here, so if x is great, if the, sorry, x bar, if the standard, if the mean, sample mean is larger than that, then we reject the, the null hypothesis. Okay, so letter A asks for exactly that. Find the probability of the type 1 error for the decision rule of the critical value 43.5. So type 1 error, remember, is that we reject it even if it's true. Now, any of these other values, all of these are possible if the mean is really 42. But if we get something out here, it's far enough away that we're going to reject and say, you know what, it's not very likely. It's more likely that the, the mean is supposed to be larger than 42. So let's go ahead and calculate that on our calculator here. And so what we're going to do is, since I'm looking for an area and it's a normal curve, we'll go second distribution, normal CDF. And so our lower bound is 43.5. Our upper bound will be as big as we can go, infinity, and the average 42. And then our standard deviation will be 6, because that's the square root of 36, which is the variance, divided by the square root of 25 to take into account the sample size. And when I put all those in, then we get our answer of 0.1056. So 0 0.106, and that is alpha, the probability of a type 1 error. Now, the question goes a little bit further and says, all right, well, suppose the true value of the mean is 44.9. So that means the real mean is over here at 44.9. Now, if we, we know that the variance is 36, which means the spread isn't going to change at all, so it should look more or less the same. Though, as I've mentioned before, I'm not an amazing artist, so this may look nothing like the original one, but uh, that one's not so bad. Anyway, so the dis distribution's the same. And the question says, find the probability of a type 2 error. So remember, type 2 occurs when we... Remember, we talked about this before, when we accept the null hypothesis, though in reality it's not true. So we're taking this true situation, which is 44.9, so this is the real distribution right here. We tested this one over here. So we already rejected the null hypothesis for anything bigger than 43.5. So that means we've already taken care of all this. But there's a chance that I got a value less than that, in which case I would actually end up rejecting, or sorry, I would accept this hypothesis when actually it's not true. It's something larger than 42. Okay, so this over here, this green section, is what I need to look for to find beta, the probability of a type 2 error. All right, so that shouldn't be too difficult. Again, we're just looking for a, per, a probability of a uh, area. So we're going to go right back into normal CDF. And this time, the lower is going to be negative 1 E 99, because we want to start all the way down here. Um, and then we'll go up to 43.5. And then our real mean is 44.9 here. And the standard deviation is the same. 
and so we'll take that and run with it and we'll get that beta is 0 0.122 all right so that's the probability of um, if given the true mean of 44.9 that's the probability of us having accepted 42 even though it's really not true now you'll notice that these two probabilities are very very close to each other well the next question is suppose the critical value in the decision rule is changed so we're not going to be using the 43.5 anymore the question says for what critical value is the probability of type 1 equal to the probability of type 2 okay well think about this here's 42 Here's 44.9. Where is this green section going to be the same as the black section, which again went on and on? Well, since we know that the two are symmetrical, that position is going to be right here, because then I've got one tail here, I've got one tail there. Since they're at the same height, that means we're at the same point on the other side of the curve, but for the other curve. So this point right here, smack dab in the middle of these two, is the one where I'm going to get them to cross because of the symmetricity. All right? So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to go 42, oops, that's not what I want, 42 plus 44.9, and then divide by 2. And I get my answer, 43.45. And the question is actually just asking for the critical value. It says, what is the critical value here? Well, it's 43.45. Now, you could actually find the probability if you wanted. You'd be able to get this probability right here and also this probability on the other side. And you could show that the two are equal. In fact, I worked it out earlier and I got a probability of 0.113 for both sides. Why don't you give it a try and see if you get the same thing. But anyway, that's the basic idea and that's the end of this video.